Support for this podcast and the following message come from Money Mind from Prudential, a podcast powered by your financial behavior. Hear insights from financial psychologists, experts, and more. Download and subscribe to Money Mind wherever you find podcasts and learn more at slate.com slash money mind. Hey, everybody. Guess what? Ask Me Another is headed down south. On September 13th, we'll be in Nashville at the War Memorial Auditorium with super special guest country singer Martina McBride. And on September 27th, we're in Dallas at the Majestic Theater. Tickets and information on how to be a contestant are at amatickets.org. Game on. Thanks so much for listening to Ask Me Another. And guess what? There's another great way to listen to our show on your next road trip, NPR One. It's an app for your phone, kind of like Pandora, but for public radio. And it's full of news, podcasts, including this very show you're listening to right now. So whenever you're ready to listen, NPR One has something great just for you. Find it on your app store, NPR One. From NPR and WNYC, coming to you from the Bell House in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, it's NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia, Ask Me Another. I'm Jonathan Colton. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. We have a great show for you. Four contestants are backstage filling out the Sunday crossword in pen, waiting to face off against each other in our nerdy games. But only one will become our big winner. And our special guests are Omari Hardwick and Notori Naughton from the Stars series Power. It's about a nightclub owner who leads a secret double life as a drug kingpin. And it makes me think about our show. You know, who really holds the power on our show? Is it me, the host and puppeteer? Is it Jonathan, wielder of the axe? Or is it art, guru of puzzles? But the answer is none of us, no. The person who holds all the power on this show is the intern who runs the buzzers. Let's get things started with our first two contestants. First up, Mary Resendiz. You are an Army officer in the IT department. Yes, I am. Okay, how did you learn about all things computer and IT? Uh, the Army saw my general studies degree and said, let's give her a really technical job. <laughs> and then they taught me everything I know. So you, you had no idea w- what you were doing on the first day of that job? Absolutely. Oh, not. yeah, okay. <laughs> That sounds, that's an interesting and, and position. And probably still don't on most days. But yeah. <laughs> I think your story is both uh, frightening and inspiring. I will tell you that. <laughs> now, your opponent is Patrice Gonzalez. You are an art photographer and organizing an arts festival in Prospect Park. The thing that I'm doing for the festival has a lot of photography in it. It's a newsstand. So everything in the newsstand is going to be an art object made by women. Oh, very yeah. cool. Awesome. So. Okay, so, Mary and Patrice, the first of you to win two of our games is going to move on to our final round at the end of the show. And we're going to start with a word game called, I'm a business man. Are you excited about that? Sure, why not? You're both women. Sounds exciting. (laughs) Mary, what is a product you would endorse if you had to endorse a product? Um, It would be a hair product. I spend a lot of money on those. So anything that would get me free, like hair gel that's sort of, Gluey, that's what I would Some use. Some gluey, yeah. a little yeah. uh, gluey what, a dippity-doo, a little sure. dippity-doo. Sure. Something stronger than dippity-doo. Okay, a hair product. Yes, A d- intense, glue-like In- hair product. Yes, yes. Patrice, what is a product you'd like to endorse? So my roommate has two cats. Um, we have a strained relationship, I would say. And <laughs> they have this thing that you bite down on, and it's like a fake cat tongue. So you bite on it, and then you <laughs> lick your cat. <laughs> to build a relationship with them because like cats groom each other that's like a bonding thing have you realized that there is no way to build a relationship with a cat <laughs> I, I think so <laughs> I think so doesn't matter if you lick it like another cat it still hates you yeah <laughs> still trying to kill you um, I expected nothing and I got so much <laughs> it's a good way to be 
So you've heard of Beats by Dre or the Oprah Winfrey Network. Perhaps you've heard of my fragrance line, uh, Musty Top Notes by Ophira. But in this game, you're going to mash up the name of a famous person with the name of a company. So for an example, let's go to our puzzle guru, Archung. If we said this California girl singer tries her hand at men's fashion, you'd answer Katy Perry Ellis. That's combining Katy Perry with the fashion designer Perry Ellis. And the celebrity's name will always come first. Just buzz in to answer, and the winner will be one step closer to the final round at the end of the show. All right, let's go. Fans of this classified ad website were initially shaken, not stirred, when they found out it was actually being run by this 007 actor. Mary. Daniel Craigslist. That is correct, yeah. Does anyone else have a real uh, ongoing thing going through their head with Daniel Craig coming out of the ocean just every time you need that it helps you motivate through your life? I'm there. I'm there with you. Yeah. Or him. Or actually. We're, I'm, there there. Him. I'm there with him, not yeah. you. Got it. Patrice, <laughs> do you know that scene? I do. Um, but my mom said something very inappropriate when we first watched that movie together, and that's all I can think of. What did she say? <laughs> she said she wasn't very impressed with the size. Oh. <laughs> Your mom sounds like a very special woman. <laughs> Instead of letting your health collapse like a house of cards, you'll feel like a princess bride as this actress teams up with a drugstore chain. Mary. Robin Wright Aid. You got it. This woman's career move from supermodel to soup model will have you saying, mm mm, good. Patrice. Naomi Campbell's soup? Exactly, yes. A real sign of the times, this online auction company wants to lead a glamorous life by teaming up with a singer, percussionist, and prince protege. Mary. Sheila Ebay? That is correct. Yeah. This gold medal winning decathlete and e-reality star won the Arthur Ashe Courage Award in 2015. Now her garage is full of Cadillacs, Chevrolets, and Buicks. Mary. Caitlin GMC. No, I'm sorry, that's not yeah. what we're looking for. It's close, but can you steal, Patrice? Oh, General Motors. <gasps> Maybe? No. Well, that's what... Oh. Yeah, do it. Make Say a it decision. Caitlin General Motors? Yes. Yeah, that was yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> this 1980s singer knows love is a battlefield. You know what else is a battlefield? The 10 items or less line at this big box store. Am I right? The big box store has a circle as its logo. <laughs> I know you can do it. I know one of you can ring in and just take a chance and make it happen. Mary? Pat been a target. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Puzzle Guru Archung, how did our contestants do? It was a tough game, but congratulations to Mary. You're one step closer to moving on to our final round. Well, let's get started on your second challenge. Mary and Patrice, we have a guessing game for you called Pie in the Sky Mall. So, Mary, what is something that you've bought that you've never actually used? It's for people that ride bicycles, like road biking. Yeah? It's called chamois butter. Chamois butter? Yes. For, where does that go? It goes where the chamois of your bike shorts goes to try and stop the chafing of yes. the road yes. biking experience. Yes. I like that as an answer. Patrice, what is something that you've purchased, but you've never used? My running shoes. Your running shoes. All right. Yep. Not once? Like maybe once. Maybe. You know, when you want to look like you work out. <laughs> totally. <laughs> of course. That's my, those are my favorite day. My favorite days are when you take the workout clothes with you, do your day, and then you just bring them right back home. Yeah. <laughs> Put them back, they're perfectly clean, ready for the next time. Our younger listeners won't believe this, but there was once a time when airlines did not allow you to use an electronic device during taxi, landing, and takeoff. Matter of fact, the only entertainment you had was an in-flight catalog filled with the most absurd products that no one would ever need, and it was called Sky Mall. 
So in this game, I'm going to describe a product, and you need to tell me if it's something that you could really buy in the Sky Mall catalog, or if it's a fake product that we just made up. Okay, and we're going to alternate back and forth so you don't have to buzz in. And if you win this game, Mary, you're going to go to the final round. Patrice, if you lose this game, we're going to throw you out of an airplane. <laughs> But it's grounded, so it's okay. It's not going to be that bad. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to start with you, Mary. Is this a real or fake product? A toilet roll iPod docking station. Play or charge your iPod while you do your business. Includes a bath tissue holder. I think that's real. <laughs> that is real. Yeah. <laughs> Patrice, towel hub, a paper towel holder for your kitchen counter with four USB ports. Real. Also real. Yeah, that's right. All right, Mary. 17th century nobility custom pet canvas. A portrait of your dog or cat posed as 17th century nobility. Real. Of course that's real. Yes. <laughs> I have five of them. I wish I had five of them. Patrice, nudies, socks with realistic life-size photos of bare feet to give the illusion that you're not wearing socks for those people who like to wear socks with sandals. Real. I'm sorry, that no. is fake. I know. It sounded like you, we just hooked into the perfect product, but we made that up. Mary. Vape Zoo, a combination vape pen and kazoo, so you can play music while you vape. I hope that's not real. It is not real. That yes. is not real. <laughs> Patrice, ticker, the happiness watch counts down your life from years to seconds, motivating you to make every second count. I think that's fake. I know. It sounds like it would be fake, but that is real. That is real. I know. It's dark. Hey, as you listen to the show, you're getting closer to death. Just think of it. <laughs> All right. These are your last clues. Mary, pierogi ornament, a Christmas ornament shaped like the Polish dumpling. I think that might be real. I think you are right. That's a real desired product. <laughs> Patrice. Total control, a full body slimming garment that starts at your ankles and ends just under your chin. That's real. I'm sorry, that is fake. That is fake. <laughs> I, I, Patrice, I'm just going to say, what, what are you wearing that under? Like a uh, ghost there, costume? There are people. There are people? There are people who would wear that. Scuba gear that need that? I feel like it would all pop out at your neck if you did that. <laughs> just all the... Just Your bubbles. head would get really big. <laughs> You'd just be walking around with a super red face <laughs> from all that compression. All right, Puzzle Guru Archung, how did our contestants do? They both did great. Mary, congratulations. You won both games, and you're moving on to the final round at the end of the show. Coming up, we'll find out who will face off against Mary in our final round at the end of the show. And also, Jonathan Colton finally admits that Bustin makes him feel good. And we'll harness the voice of house hunters to help us find a new pad in space. So stay tuned. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. <laughs> Let's take a moment to thank and share a message from our sponsor, True TV. Misconceptions, myths, and marketing ploys are all around us, but thankfully, Adam Conover is back with new episodes of True TV's Adam Ruins Everything to reveal the awful truth about everything that you take for granted. The electric car won't stop climate change, and buying a home is a terrible investment. Divorce is actually good for society. It's a comedy that will make you see the world a little differently. So check out Adam Ruins Everything, Tuesday at 10 on True TV. 
Support for this podcast and the following message comes from NerdWallet. NerdWallet makes it fast and easy to find a credit card that works for you. With hundreds of different cards to choose from and offers ranging from cash back bonuses, travel rewards to low rates and more. Their personalized tools let you compare more than 1,700 credit cards in seconds and apply instantly online. And their financial experts give straightforward, no hype reviews to help you find a better card. So learn more at nerdwallet.com slash ask me. This is Ask Me Another, NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. I'm Jonathan Colton, here with puzzle guru Art Chung, and now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. Now, before the break, our contestant Mary won her way to the final round at the end of the show, and we're going to find out who will face off against her a little later. But first, it's time for a game we call Mystery Guest. A stranger is about to come onto the stage. Jonathan Colton and I have no idea what makes this person special, but Puzzle Guru Art Chung does. Jonathan and I can only ask yes or no questions to try to figure it out. Art Chung, please bring our mystery guest out. Please welcome today's mystery guest, Rebecca McMacken. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Now, Rebecca works in Brooklyn, and she has hired some temporary workers to help her out with an interesting problem this summer. So, if you're in Jonathan, you have to figure out who are these workers and what do they do? Okay. All right, Ophira, you're first. Does most of the work these temporary workers are doing, is most of it uh, underground? No, it's very far above ground. Are we talking about trees? No, okay. but warmer. Is this a problem with an organic thing, a thing that is growing? Yes. Is it vines or plants of some kind? Yes. Not vines, not trees. Bamboo? Is it bamboo? No. <laughs> Again, in Brooklyn, what grows in Brooklyn? A, tr a tree, tree grows in a Brooklyn. A tree grows in Brooklyn. Uh, what else grows what, in Brooklyn? What grows that are problems? Um, weeds. Weeds, dandelions. It's a weed problem. Correct. You have some very tall weeds. But they're growing somewhere that is problematic. Yes. Oh, are they growing on subway tracks? No. Yes, sir. Well, we've also lost the workers issue. Yeah. Who well, are these workers? I don't know. Who they are these they workers? sound like they come very cheap. Are they gar <laughs> Are these workers gardeners and weeders? They are weeders, not gardeners. Wait, are the workers even human? No. Ah! <laughs> You've hired some animals to do some work for you. Yes. So oh, this this problem of introducing an animal to fix a problem has never gone wrong. All right. Um, we're gonna, we're, we'll give you each one question to figure oh, out. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> are you dealing with animals that will eat a certain kind of weed to deal with the problem? Yes. All right. All right, Jonathan, you want one question, and then you guys get one guess. What is the animal? That's. <laughs> Yes or no, what is the animal? <laughs> that is the question. Is the animal a mammal? Yes. That narrows it down. Okay. <laughs> All right, what's your guess? Okay, I think that she is hiring. That's an interesting word to use because I don't know what the pay rate is. Uh, but you somehow have rodents that are really after a certain kind of weed and you've released them in major um, thoroughfares in Brooklyn and they are eating up the weeds. Uh, and that's the end of the, that story. No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you are a rat breeder, and your rat hutches are filled with trees, and you've hired beavers <laughs> to get rid of all the trees. Do I, am I close? No. no. All right. So the answer is Rebecca is the horticulture director at Brooklyn Bridge Park, and there is a hill separating the park from the highway that's infested with, yes, weeds. So she's hired some goats to eat the weeds. No way! So how much does a goat go for? Only $400 a season. You get them for the whole summer? Yes. And where are the goats hanging out when they're not working? Uh, we have a shed for them. And where is that shed? It's top secret. Oh, interesting. <laughs> it's like basically someone's apartment. <laughs> Wait, so there's a, where you get it, is there a company that you can just rent a goat? There is. There's a an very interesting character who has a monopoly on goat rental for the Eastern Seaboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a nice hill covered with weeds. It'd be a shame if anything were to happen to and it. And why did you choose goats? 
There were a few other options. We could either uh, spray herbicides all over the hill. Which we don't want to do. Which would be crazy. Uh, we're also an organic park, and we try to manage the, uh, the wild areas for uh, migratory birds and pollinators, et cetera. Huh. So bad news. Uh, we could also do it ourselves and have gardeners climbing all over the berm, but it would be it's very, very steep. It would be difficult, a lot of work, and we might damage it with our large human feet. And so, yeah, goats were really the only logical option. And how many goats do you have employed? Four. And they have names, right? Yes. It's Hector, Horatio, Eyebrows, and Minnie. <laughs> I want to meet Eyebrows. Yeah. yeah. Eyebrows sounds great. Yeah, and Eyebrows. When the, when, the, when the goats are done, you just, what do you do? You just get a bunch of, you hire a bunch of lions to come and eat the goats? <laughs> They go back to the farm. <laughs> and then when the weeds regrow, we'll bring them back. Oh, so they really have figured out some job security, these goats. <laughs> Rebecca, thank you so much for playing our game. Everybody give it up one more time for Rebecca McMacken. <laughs> Let's meet our next two contestants. First up, Josh Pollenberg. You're a grant manager at Pfizer, and you're obsessed with board games. I am. Obsessed? Okay, what is a board game that none of us have heard of? Some obscure board game that we have to play. Power Grid. Power Grid. Power Grid is amazing. Okay, that sounds a little too real. Um, what happens in Power Grid? Uh, There's in, a blackout. <laughs> <laughs> you have to uh, buy power stations and then buy cities to put the power stations in and then power them to get more money to buy more power stations to power more cities. Is it called Con Ed? <laughs> like, what is this game? <laughs> Your opponent is Joey Gutman, who apparently says you, that your competitive nature led you to a job as a federal litigator. That's true. Now, you are no stranger to the game show Circuit. You've been on Jeopardy, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, but also, and most notably, a hot dog eating contest. The most important by far. How did you do? I won. You won the hot dog eating? How many it hot was, dogs? It was very informal. It was, uh, we were camp counselors, and we wanted to keep the kids entertained. There were eight and a half hot dogs without buns. How did you feel the rest of the day? Not great. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> okay, remember, Josh and Joey, the first of you who wins two of our games is going to move on to battle our earlier winner, Mary, in the final round at the end of the show. And your first challenge is a music parody game called Who You Gonna Call? Josh, when you're in trouble, when you need help, who do you call? Google. Google. <laughs> Joey, how about you? Who do you call when you need help? My wife. Oh, yeah. And what does she say? Stop it. <laughs> okay, so we are going to do the most dangerous thing we've ever done on the show. We are going to do a parody of Ghostbusters. That's right. We took the Ghostbusters theme song and rewrote it to be about other things that end with Buster or busters, such as gangbusters or bunker busters. Two examples of things that end in busters. <laughs> Buzz in to answer, and the winner will be one step closer to the final round, and the loser will be forced to listen to a Redditor mansplain how the all-female Ghostbusters reboot ruined his childhood. <laughs> Here we go. There was something blue where you rented flicks. Who you gonna call? Joey. Blockbuster. <laughs> That's right. Blockbuster is good. If you're stalling things on the Congress floor, who you gonna call? Joey. Philip Buster. That's I right. I apologize nice. so much for the scene. <laughs> okay, here's a terrible joke I wrote. What's the difference between a ghost and a congressman? <laughs> I, I don't know. Ghosts show up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, ghosts are transparent? What do you think of that oh, one? That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. I ain't afraid of no dirt. Because I have a handheld vacuum cleaner. Josh! Dustbuster! That's right. The look on both of their faces at the end Are of... Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's all we can? <laughs> a clown? Roosevelt and Taft Grab the Sherman Act Who you gonna call? 
Joey. Trust Busters. That's right. <laughs> if you want some deals on Black Friday, who you gonna call? Josh. Door Busters. Yeah, you got it. I ain't afraid of bar food. I hear you like ski ball. I ain't afraid of arcades. Chain restaurant. <laughs> Joey. Dave and Busters. You got it. An impossible claim. TV show debunks. Who you gonna call? Joey. Myth Busters. That's right. Art Chung, how did our contestants do? They both did great. Joey, congratulations. You're one step closer to moving on to our final round. Josh and Joey, we've got a great trivia game for you. Joining us on the line from Los Angeles, please welcome a voice that is very familiar to fans of HDTV. She's the narrator of HDTV's House Hunters and House Hunters International, Adromeda Dunker. Hi, it's, it's Andromeda. Uh, hi, <laughs> that is a, a great name, Andromeda. How did you get that name, by the way? Uh, my parents. My mother is an astronomer, and I was named after the Andromeda Galaxy. Has the gig as the doing all these uh, House Hunter shows uh, and talking about all the different real estates, has it helped you in finding an apartment or designing a house? Oh, I've learned a lot about real estate, and I really had no interest before. But mostly I, from the renovation shows, I've learned what to avoid, like what trends are so popular that I, I can kind of predict when they're going to dip down. For instance, granite countertops and stainless steel appliances. Everyone wants them, and now they're kind of on the down. Okay, so when you do <laughs> narration for House Hunters, you do, obviously you do the domestic one, also you do international one. Do you have to do a different read uh -huh. depending on the audience? The international one is more sort of lilting and romantic because we're going on a voyage. Ah, oh, yes. And for each show, there's also like a, there's, there's tiny house hunters and I have kind of a more tiny voice. Oh. <laughs> well, in this game, uh, we are giving Andromeda a promotion for one day. She is going to be narrating House Hunters Intergalactic. Andromeda will read a real <laughs> estate ad. Contestants, you have to buzz in and identify what celestial body she is describing. Okay, here we go. Take it away, Adromina. This hot property's in the middle of it all. Its amenities include stainless steel appliances and central nuclear fusion heating. Perfect for a large family, this celestial body is big enough for about one million Earths to fit inside. Joey. Jupiter. Ooh, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Josh, can you steal? The sun. The sun is what we were looking for, yes. All right, take it away for number two. Big city dwellers looking to escape the hustle and bustle say time slows down near this location. Once homeowners move in, they never move out. Josh. A black hole. <laughs> yes, a black hole. Yeah. Yeah. Hipsters love this cozy former planet nestled in the up-and-coming Kuiper Belt neighborhood. Updated features include granite countertops and a volcanic ice maker. Joey. Pluto? Yes, it is Pluto indeed. Smart homeowners know to buy property in this large, bright galaxy now. Prices will skyrocket as it merges with the neighboring Milky Way in about four billion years. Josh. The Andromeda Galaxy? That is correct! Yeah! Yeah. You didn't think we would do that with the galaxy on the phone, right? <laughs> <laughs> How often are you explaining what your name means, Andromeda? Every time I meet someone. Yeah. 
Uh, and Do we talk about Starbucks names? Oh, yeah. You, what's your <laughs> Starbucks you name? I, my Starbucks <laughs> name is, uh, well, I, I used to go with Joan. I've now just used the same name as the barista I'm taking that I'm giving the order <laughs> to. They love that. That's cool. Yeah. That keeps it fresh for you, too. <laughs> That's right. And they think um, it's a personal connection. Mine's it's just Andy, you know. Andy. It's just short, Andy. Yep. And people, people can get that. I know. It's a whole different life we lead with our weird names. <laughs> Josh and Joey have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, let's give them the next clue. A find like this one only comes by once every 75 years. Locals lovingly refer to this property as a dirty snowball or a snowy dirt ball. Features an on-site fitness room with treadmills and an elliptical orbit. <laughs> Josh. Haley's Comet. Haley's Comet is correct. Uh, dirty Snowball was my nickname in Canada. <laughs> I'm not going to ask for a story. <laughs> this property features a continental name and continental style. Snorkel and ski in the same day on this moon of Jupiter, with a salty ocean only 60 miles from the slopes. Joey. Europa. Europa is correct. <laughs> yes. Nice. Shakespeare fans love this planet's moons, with names like Juliet, Desdemona, and Titania. The planet features a unique tilted axis design, for those who can stop giggling at its name. Joey. Uranus. That is correct. <laughs> Puzziger Archung, how did our contestants do? It was a close game, but Josh won that game, so we'll be going to a tiebreaker. Give it up for the voice of House Hunters and House Hunters International, Andromeda Dunker. Our contestants are tied at one game each. Let's go to our puzzle guru, Art Chung, for the tiebreaker. All right. In this tiebreaker game, I'm going to give you a category, and you'll go back and forth naming things that fall in that category. The first contestant to mess up, either by guessing incorrectly, repeating an answer, or taking too long, will be eliminated. You'll have to buzz in to answer first, and then we'll go back and forth. Your category. By total area, name the 10 tiniest states in the United States. Josh. Rhode Island. That is correct. Joey. Connecticut. Also correct. Back to Josh. New Hampshire. That is true. Vermont. Joey says Vermont. That is also correct. Maryland. Maryland, you got it. Back to Joey. Delaware. Joey, that is correct. Josh, I need to give you three seconds. West Virginia. Pulled it out. West Virginia is correct. There are three left. Joey. New Jersey? <laughs> that is correct. There are, <laughs> there are two left, Josh. And three seconds. South Dakota. No, I'm sorry. That is incorrect. The remaining two answers were Hawaii and Massachusetts. Joey, congratulations. You're moving on to the final round at the end of the show. Wow, wow, that was an incredible match. It is settled. Our finalists are Joey and Mary. They will face off in our final round at the end of the show. And if you are able to recite copious stats about these celestial bodies, why not rent some real estate on our stage? Fill out a contestant form at amatickets.org to join us, and you'll love our little fixer-upper. Coming up, Omari Hardwick and Notori Naughton take us to school. Old school, that is, for a classic 90s R&B quiz jam. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. Support for this podcast and the following message comes from Fifth Generation, maker of Tito's Handmade Vodka. Tito Beverage, yes, that is his real name, incorporates the concepts of artisan craftsmanship found in boutique wineries into the spirits industry to create Tito's Handmade Vodka. And Tito still uses the time-honored pot still batch distillation process at the original distillery where he started it all in Austin, Texas. Tito's Handmade Vodka is made from corn and is naturally gluten-free. Hey, thanks so much for listening to Ask Me Another. StoryCorps travels the country collecting the wit, wisdom, and poetry in stories 
of everyday people. The StoryCorps podcast showcases these unscripted stories about real life. Listen in and discover meaning in the words of someone you might not notice walking down the street. So find the StoryCorps podcast now on the NPR One app and at npr.org slash podcasts. This is NPR's Ask Me Another. I'm Jonathan Colton here with puzzle guru Art Chung. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. Soon we're going to find out which of our two contestant finalists, Mary and Joey, will be today's big winner. But it's time to welcome our special guests from the star show Power. It's Notori Naughton and Omari Hardwick. Now, in the series Power, Omari plays the main character, Ghost, who has a double life. He's a nightclub owner, but also a drug kingpin who is trying to go straight. Notori plays his wife, Tasha, who yes. is power hungry in her own way. Now, your characters, uh, you have these amazing characters who are yes. dealing, it's like hero fallen. You know, we have a lot of these sort of classic stories. But yeah. for, your hero, for your characters, did you draw on any uh, inspiration from characters in film or television or theater to inform how you wanted to play Tasha and how you wanted to play Ghost? Uh, I mean, yeah, that's a good question. For Tasha, Movies like, I don't know, Casino, uh, The Sopranos, I watch Carlito's Way. Mm, Carlito's and just looking Way at, yeah, sure. the male character of Ghost is also supported by these really strong, badass women. And I think when you watch, you know, different shows, whether it's about drugs or whatever, the mafia, you see their women are just as gangster. You know, Amari's like, you know, I'm five feet. And, you know, he's coming up, like, in the camera test for the role, mm. very strong. And I went right back at him, like, yeah, and what? <laughs> Why you take the money, ghost? Don't think I'm stupid. I ain't boo-boo the fool. And I just remember she that was one part. of the things that helped me get the role. That's because true. you have to be fearless. And, Omari, for your character, ghost. I think, you know, I tried to stay away from visuals too much. Because I didn't want to misinform what I could bring or sort of cloud that. But, uh... Maybe just thinking about the themes. I read Moby Dick before season one because he was so narcissistic. Congratulations. I would never get through that. <laughs> I read it. I know. It's crazy. I wanted to read it because I thought Ghost, if anything, was this narcissistic nut mm. who was so insecure in ways that he didn't take anybody's no for an answer. And this crazy quest for a well in the in the book Moby Dick it made a lot of sense I tried to draw some odd yeah. parallels to the guy yeah. just to bring something different to him yeah. you know now, you mentioned 50 Cent obviously he's the executive producer and mm -hmm. also plays a major role on major, the show major role. Uh, yeah. and what's it like to work with him did you know him before uh, I, I didn't know me. I mean I had loosely me? met him just yeah. from like the record business being in a girl group way back when I was a teenager but I always remembered when 50 first came out I met him at a probably a club date, and it, I think in the club had just popped off. Go shorty. Yes, it's your it's birthday. Your birthday. <laughs> gonna party was like, it your hey. birthday? No, but I still was partying <laughs> like it was my birthday. That would have been but cool. But that's how, I was like, who is this 50 Cent? Cool. And I got to meet him, down to earth, cool, <laughs> and still to this day, still down to earth, still grounded, enjoys our show like we're family. Very invested. It's Shows very, up on he's set. very passionate. Cool so guy, that man. is dope. Have yeah. you uh, been over to his house to hang out? Oh, Mario. Yeah, I go a lot. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Didn't he buy like Mike Tyson's? Yeah. He bought yeah, Mike Tyson's house. Crazy. Yeah, he knows. Give me a top 10 moment in the house. <laughs> <laughs> top 10 moment in the house. You know what? You're asking for too much. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're asking for too much. No, I'm just joking. Top 10 moment in the house. This microphone is very intimidating to me. Yeah? Oh, I love it. It makes I me want to sing. I, no, something about this, like, I literally... That's in, You know, you are what they call in the biz a triple threat, right, Natura? You're a singer, you. dancer, actor. Yeah, I hear also you were a... Uh, is this in high school, perhaps? Perhaps oh, younger, boy. I don't know. A competitive double Dutch champion? Yes! What? Did you know that? You know the shit that Oh, champion. this is like... I actually loved Double Dutch, was, and I was were very, you a champ, very for real? no, for real. Like in this was like in grade school, seventh and eighth grade. Okay, um, yeah, I don't know. But Wait, was I it in compulsory freestyle or uh, speed rope? 
Wow, you're you're really good. I just you know. well, I grew up in a hood in Jersey, and we were just competing on a real regular level uh, in East Orange. It was basically tricks. Like yeah, I was yeah. really good at tricks and really really good at the length of jumping. I could just jump and keep jumping for an extended endurance. Amount of time. Endurance, forever. She's but yeah, no, like I, I loved it. So this this show has so many uh, dramatic plot twists and turns. Yeah. I, how far ahead of time are do you have the script in hand? Like, are you getting scripts? And have no idea. You're like rushing through it to make in sure you're still alive. In, in the beginning, they did, uh, and then ultimately we got to a, a place, and I become a sounding board, obviously. So you'll get Notori knocking on my door. Mar, you got the script yet? Mm-hmm. Billy, we talk about it amongst each other. Mar, you got the script yet? Joe, Mar, you got the script? I might not have the script, but I'll have the theme of the script. Mm-hmm. So finally, the four of us started to. We were kind of in front of the other cast members, at least in terms of knowing, sort of. But you don't. Sometimes you don't want to know that far ahead. Yeah, yeah, you, want yeah. to, you want to be where you are in that episode. So, But we're really lucky, too, to that. Now that we're in season three, we've been very fortunate to have a group of writers and led by Courtney Camp, our showrunner, be like, how do you feel about Tasha? Where would you like to see her go? We say, okay, I want Tasha to have a new side piece this year. <laughs> I mean, because they done killed my boo, Sean. R.I.P. Sean, played by the amazing Sinqua Walls. Did he die? But, you know, (laughs) oh, (laughs) did he die? You know what? But that's the thing. I I think we're very much a part of the conversation, which is nice. That is very cool. So you're starting season three. If people are starting to watch right now, they're just like, oh, my God, I have to get in on power. How would you suggest they watch the show? Should they chill out with a glass of wine? Should they oh, this put is it cool. aside like yeah. two weekends? Well, what, 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 we, we suggest- what we've asked often now that we know there's so many power parties, we've asked like um, salty or sweet because your snacks tell a lot about you. So. Mm, oh, yeah. That's good. Do you like salty snacks yeah, or sweet that. snacks? Or you, wine or, 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 liquor. Wit, or liquor. Yeah, I've Should actually... Should you watch been, it with your significant other since you were talking about boo? Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Couples should watch this together. You might get turned no. on by seeing us. You might want to try it at home. No. No. You know what I'm saying? Why not? Watch no. it with your, your mate. So watching it with your couple ends up bad. Why? Because they want to enjoy it all to themselves. Yeah. Really? Oh, y'all are just a mess. They, she said what she y'all said. Y'all are a mess. Thank you all for being here. This yeah, is this super is cool. awesome. Actually, can we do this again? I don't know if Natori and I have ever done anything. We like have this. never done anything like this. And oh, this yeah? is the coolest. You guys are the coolest. So yeah. thank y'all for being here. So. This is super cool. Thank you. We have another element for you. Oh. Okay. Which is an Ask Me Another Challenge. Why do I suddenly get nervous? No, you're going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, take you down. I'm very competitive. Here's guys. what happened, Tori. We, we asked what topic would be equally interesting and challenging for both of you. And what you told us was 1990s R&B music. Oh. That's, I could dig that. Yeah? I like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in this game, we're going to read lyrics oh, from man. some classic 90s R&B hits. Right, is the audience helping you out? The audience is not helping Don't you help out. Don't help us. Um, so all you have to do is give us the title of the song, uh, which happens to be the next line. So we will leave that out, and you have to ring in. Oh, my gosh. Right. This is the most fun I've had all week, guys. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Ready? All right. Yep. Here's your first one that I'm going to read. And I will not read it well, just to make it more difficult. Disclaimer. No, I don't want your number, no. I don't want to give you mine, Stop. and no. I don't want to meet you nowhere, no. Don't want none of your time, and no, I don't want. I don't want no scrubs. A scrub is a guy who can't get no love from me. Hanging on a passenger side of his best friend's ride, trying to holler at me. Hey. TLC, hello. I mean, I knew it from like the first word. I am not sure you knew the answer. That was freaking awesome. <laughs> that was amazing. That was amazing. No, I guess you. we'll accept that That's answer. True. I no. guess we'll I was accept like, that. It's that called was... Scrubs by TLC. <laughs> that was freaking awesome, man. <laughs> Don't leave me in all this pain. Don't leave me out in the rain. Come back and bring back my smile. Come oh, and God. take these tears away. I need your arms to hold me now. The nights are so unkind. Bring back those nights. When I held you beside me. Uh, boys to men. Boys to men. Uh, Tony Braxton. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I break my heart. I'm sorry. I'm think. Okay, okay, go. I break my heart. Tony Braxton. I wasn't That's thinking. correct. I break yeah. my heart okay, is correct. Okay. I can't sing it. I thought for some I can't sing I was it. Uh, good job. Good I just job. remember. I remember that. I remember that. 
Tell me if I'm off. Tyson Beckford was in the freaking video. Yes. You know what? And, and I know that. And there was, and and there was the first, it was fine ass Tony Brown. <laughs> yes. like she had the big hair. The shortcut, it was Her body shit. was giving me, and she was like, unbreak my. Yeah. Yeah. She <laughs> gave that look. Yes, Tony. Okay, so yes. Who said yes? Okay, that was good. I'm yes. sorry. All right. Here's your next one. You guys yeah, are doing no great. There are miracles in life I must achieve, but first I know it oh, starts it. inside of me. Stop. Oh, if Stop. I can't see it, then I can be it. If I just believe it, there's nothing to it. Whitney Houston. Right? Uh, no, what? it definitely is Whitney and Mariah Carey. Oh, no. really? I, no. My see, mind, I heard R. I heard, Kelly. I might be off. R. Kelly. Oh, my gosh. Why do I What's hear the all the songs that I want to hear? <laughs> No, it's, oh my gosh, it's R. Kelly, uh, wait, um, I believe I can fly. Yes. Wait, but That's why right. did I think you were saying, I think I just love Whitney Houston I'm so much. I'm older than her. I'm cheating. Okay, I, I so don't I don't know, know if he got that. I don't know who's winning, by the way. I have no idea. Well, that's a half a point. I feel like everybody's winning. I feel like, I feel like that was like a half a winning. point. Yeah, because you get I half actually a point. got the title. You got the artist. So we share the point. One yeah, you can share the part. Okay. What cool. title did you say? You've got a I couple I believe more. I can fly. That's the actual song. Okay, let's go to the next one. Title. <laughs> when will you get the picture? You're the past, I'm the future. Get away. It's my time to shine. If you didn't know. Naturi. Wait a minute. Why yes. are you reading it that way? <laughs> what? It, because that was so weird because you didn't add any melody to it. it. Can you read it again you for her? I'll, re a, I'll read it again. I'll but read like it again. not as like... like not, yeah, not as white? Like, well, no, I wasn't... It's all I, I got. Not gonna it's say all that. I got. I was not going to say that, guys. But okay. Okay, so one more time with a little more... Uh. A little bit more... Uh. When will you get the picture? You're the past. I'm the future. Get away. It's oh, my time to shine. Oh, oh, if you didn't know. Oh, word. If you didn't, when will you song. get the picture? There you go. Na, na, na. Okay, well, I needed a melody. No, I that didn't. is Brandy and Monica, That's the great. boys' mom. That's great. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. That was so tricky. That was great. Okay. All right. Here's your last one. So I'm at two and a half. Just keep tally. No, not two and a half. half. <laughs> Keeping Hang tally. <laughs> Keeping tally. This is a short one. Okay. You acting kind of shady, ain't calling me baby. Why the sudden change? I'm a little hat. Say my name, say my I'm a name. Yeah. Destiny Child. I'm a little hat. Destiny Child, say my name. Sing it. Look, that get, is correct. I'm all, dropping the I mic. I want all the ladies to say it. <laughs> I'm dropping it. Thank you guys for giving us something fun. My pleasure. Thank you. Power airs Sunday on Stars. Please Sunday. give it up one more time for Amari Hardwick Thank and Victoria Naughton. Thank you, you so you much. Great crowd. You guys have been awesome. Power, man. Now it's time to crown our big winner. Let's bring back our finalists, Mary and Joey. How's it going, Art Chung? Take it away. Mary and Joey, your final round is called You Do Know Jack. In this round, every correct answer will contain the name Jack. For example, if I said, a person who cuts down trees, you'd answer, he's a lumberjack, and be okay. We're playing this round like a penalty shootout. You'll each get up to eight rapid-fire questions and we'll alternate back and forth. The contestant who scores the most points will be our big winner. Your prize will be an Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube and a tote bag of power swag, including the first two seasons on DVD. We flipped a coin backstage and Joey is going first. Joey, snack food in the song Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Cracker Jack. Correct. Mary, a pumpkin with holes cut in it to look like a face. Jack-o'-lantern. Correct. Joey, a garment used by escape artists such as Houdini. A straight jacket. That's right. Mary, in the Christmas song, a wintry sprite who's nipping at your nose. Jack Frost. True. Joey, it's another word for pancake. Flapjack. You got it. Mary, the MTV series that kick-started the career of Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> Jackass. True. <laughs> Joey, on TV's Frasier, Eddie is this type of hunting dog breed. Jack Russell Terrier. That is correct. Mary, it's the fairy tale of a boy who climbs a plant and steals gold. Jack and the Beanstalk. Correct. 
We're halfway through our questions, and the score is tied. Joey, it's a folding blade or type of dive? Jackknife. Correct. Mary, a mild pale cheese named after the county in California where it originated. Three seconds. I'm sorry, we were looking for Monterey Jack. Joey, it's a Netflix animated comedy starring Will Arnett. A Bojack Horseman? That is also correct. Mary, it's a mythical animal that looks like a rabbit with horns. A jackalope? Yep. Joey, it's a 2003 comedy about a marsupial who hopped away with 50 grand. Kangaroo Jack. That's true. Okay, here's the situation. Joey is in the lead, seven to five. Mary, if you get any of your remaining questions wrong, or Joey gets any of his correct, Joey wins the game. Mary, it's an edible plant that stinks but tastes great. Three seconds. I'm sorry, the answer we were looking for was jackfruit. That means Joey is our big winner. All right. <laughs> Fantastic job, Mary. Joey, congratulations. You're Ask Me Another Thank Big you. Winner. Enjoy your prize. And that is our show. Thank you so much for playing. And for bonus games and stuff too hot for radio, look us up on Facebook and Twitter. Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher. And come see us live or be a contestant. Go to amatickets.org. Ask Me Another's Puzzle Guru is Art Chung. Hey, my name anagrams to Narc Thug. Our house musician is Jonathan Colton. Thou Jolta Cannon. Our puzzles were written by David Letzler, Adam Markowitz, and senior writers Greg Lightman and Karen Lurie. Ask Me Another's produced by Mike Katzif, Travis Larchuk, Julia Melfi, Denny Shin, Ramel Wood, and our intern Ashlyn Hatch, along with Anya Grunman. We are recorded by Damon Whittemore, Mike Cohn, and Jeff O'Neill. Portions of the final round not affecting the outcome were edited. Ask Me Another was created by Eric Newsom and Jesse Baker. We'd like to thank our home in Brooklyn, New York, The Bell House. Hot Heel Blues. And our production partner, WNYC. I'm her ripe begonias. Ophira Eisenberg. And this was Ask Me Another from NPR. <laughs> Next time on Ask Me Another, we talk to VIP David Cross, whose TV shows tend to find fame after they're off the air. Not appreciated in my time. I'm going to have myself killed, but in a way that I can be cryologically, right? Cryogenically, Cryogenically thank you. Yeah. There's a certain cryologic to what I said, though. Uh, Join me, Jonathan Colton, on NPR's Hour of Puzzles, Word Games,